Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Today we will celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah's oracle describes the servant of the Lord who justifies the people through his suffering. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him because of his affliction he shall see the light in fullness of days through his suffering my servant shall justify many in their guilt he shall bear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Our trust in you. 
See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear Him, upon those who hope for His kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Jesus was like us in all things except sin. He knows our temptations and our weaknesses. Let us approach him with confidence. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit, one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. 
To be honest, I am envious. Naiinggit po ako. Naiinggit ako sa mga apostoles. Bakit? You know, in, in their journey with their faith, nandun lagi ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo sa kanila to assist them. To assist them and to help them. Alam naman natin ang ating mga apostoles, itong ating mga mga nagsimula ng ating simbahan, i-establish ang ating simbahan, eh, mga simple na mga tao pagdating sa pananampalataya. They never really had that very deep understanding of the faith. Kaya nga along the way in their journey with Jesus, maraming beses na nadapa, maraming beses na nagkamali ang mga apostoles. Parang tayo lang, ano? Eh, nakakatuwa eh. Pero nakakaingit, nakakaingit kasi nandun ang Panginoong Heso Kristo sa kanilang tabi to make them understand the Christian way of life. Kaya nga in matters of faith, in understanding the faith, nandun ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Nandun ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo to make James and John understand what it is really to live in the glory of God. In the kingdom of God. And that is to bear the cross. Galing mismo sa bibig ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. It was clear with their ears. Nandun din yung ating Panginoong Heso Kristo to make the apostles understand the way of charity. Kaya nga nung nagagalit na yung ibang mga apostoles dito sa dalawa, si James and John, Nandun na nga ating Panginoong Heso Kristo to tell them that the way of our life is really about serving. Not being about greater than the other. Kaya ang ganda. Ang ganda na kanilang sitwasyon. Kasi nandun lagi ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo to listen to them. And to make them understand. And to give them a deeper understanding of the truth of their faith and the way of the of the Christian life. Ngayon ang tanong, paano naman tayo? Paano naman tayo? Well, this gospel today somehow assures us that that is the way of the Lord to be always with us, to make us understand his life, to give us a deeper understanding of the faith. Kaya nga sa journey of faith natin, nandun pa rin ang ating Panginoong Diyos kasakasama natin. Nasaan siya? Eh di yung kanyang sugo, ang Espiritu Santo sa bawat isa sa atin. That is why we are asked, invited to receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. To gain that environment in receiving the truth, the life of Jesus sa bawat isa sa atin. Nang sa gayon, para tayo mga apostoles na mas mayroong opportunity na mapalalim ang pananampalataya. At ang kagandahan nun, mga kapatid, kahit hindi natin physically nakakasama ang ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo, since the Holy Spirit could be present in each and every one of us, we could have a better understanding of our faith by listening to one another. It could be individually or it could be communally as a church. Yun yung pagkakataon natin para mapalalim ang ating pananampalataya. Kasi nandito, kasakasama natin ang ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo sa mga buhay natin, sa paglalakbay natin sa pananampalataya. Paano gagawin? Makikinig tayo. Makikinig tayo. And I tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that listening in this journey of faith has always been the practice of our church. Alam ba natin yun? Practice lagi yun ng simbahan natin. Kaya nga we have that gathering called the Synod. Kaya siguro noong 2015, narinig nyo yun. Ano ba yung Synod of Bishops na yun? Yun yung gathering na yun. Yun yung gathering that we listen to one another as a community, as a church, 
represented by the bishops. Kaya ang mga bishops ng sinod na yun, nag-gather, pinapakinggan nila kung ano yung experience ng simbahan doon sa ibang lugar, pinapakinggan nila yung experience ng simbahan, yung pananampalataya dito sa Asia, sharing of that experiences, and praying together, na sana maintindihan nila lalo kung paano gumalaw bilang isang nananampalataya sa ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo. And now, again, on 2023, meron na naman pong pagkakataon na makikinig ang bawat isa through a synod of bishops sa 2023. At ang kagandahan nito, mga kapatid, ang kagandahan nito, this synod on 2023 is open to the participation of each and every one of us. Kasi pwede natin sabihin na yung sinod naman, sila bishop lang yung nandun, sila father lang yung nandun. Kami naman, mga ordinaryong pari, ordinaryong tao, hindi naman nakaka-participate doon. Ah, the church would like and is very much eager to listen to each and every experience na meron tayong lahat. Kaya nga today, the Pope will be convoking the Synod. And he urges everyone to participate. Gustong marinig ng ating Santo Papa, ng ating simbahan, ang mga boses nating lahat. Kaya ang ating simbahan po, nagpi-prepare para sa gathering na ito. Kaya nga sana, we take this opportunity na mag-participate nang sa gayon, hindi lang natin mapairinig ang mga boses natin, ang mga hinaing natin sa simbahan, kundi para meron din tayong pagkakataon na marinig yung experience ng ating mga kapatid. As we said, is the temple of God. And there is the presence of God. Kaya napakaganda nito. Kaya nga, ang ating simbahan dito sa Archdiocese of Lingayan, Dagupan, prepared a pastoral message about this synod. And our bishop would like, every, would like to share this, this pastoral letter to everyone. Kaya in preparation of the synod, I would like to, to, to invite everyone to, to kindly listen sa mensahe ng ating obispo uh, in preparation of that synod. Sa gayon, meron tayong mas active na participation para sa gathering na ngayon. So I'm going to read this, this, this pastoral letter. It's, it's entitled, Jesus Walked with Them. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, future generations will look back to this day, the 17th of October 2021, as a historic milestone in the life of the church. The Pope convokes a synod today simultaneously in all the particular churches worldwide, leading to the General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops on 2023. The Pope believes that the path of synodality is the plan of God for the church of the third millennium. Let us walk together, listening. We grow by listening. A synod is not just an event. It is a journey. A synod is not just a meeting. It is the life of the church. A synod is not just an assembly in view of administration. It is a convocation guided by the Spirit for the challenge of mission. St. John Chrysostom aptly said, that the church and synod are synonymous. Two landscapes. What will happen in the next months? We will gather together in small circles in parishes, schools, and basic ecclesial communities to pray together and ask the Holy Spirit to lend us His eyes and mind and heart. 
we will look at the two landscapes not with our eyes but with the eyes of the Lord the first is how is our church within the Pope asked us how is this journeying together happening today in our local church what steps does the Spirit invite us to take in order to grow in our journeying together how are the shepherds and the shepherded how is the life of worship brought to the life of charity how is faith lived and shared how is our church discipline and life the second is how is the church together with the entire human family are we still salt and light of the world is dialogue our way of life how willing are we to listen with humility and respect despite differences have we become haughty or insensitive to the groans of suffering humanity many signs in looking at the church from the inside and looking at the church with the entire human family we cannot ignore the signs of our times we are not blind to the challenges that the covid pandemic has confronted us with we cannot disregard the sexual and financial scandals in the church and in government we cannot overlook the attraction of secularism and materialism and the double-edged power of the digital world we cannot brush off the erosion of ethical values and the idolatry of relativism we are aware of the antipathy and disdain against traditional institutions foremost, foremost of which is our church the effects of ecological abuse terror and violence are too glaring to overlook three inspirations our biblical inspiration comes from three actors the first is Jesus who was sent to bring the good news to the poor the second is the crowd the everyone of humanity longing for salvation the third is the apostles who guard the place of Jesus to make it easier for people to meet him the three actors are important together without Jesus the crowd and the apostles these are just pursue this just pursue a political plot without the apostles to guard the Lord's place Jesus will be a myth or ideology without the crowd jesus and the apostles will just be an exclusive self self absorbed sect only the three are important and inseparable but there is a fourth actor that insists to enter the opponent of the lord we must stand guard against the evil one who wants to separate the three or wants us to avoid the cross for the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many we must always remember that God wants all to be saved barriers need to be torn down and bridges of encounter must be built in matters of faith unity in matters of opinion liberty in all things charity our tools our first tool is sensitivity we must become a church that makes attentive and selfless listening its lifestyle sensitivity will gain for us a discerning heart to know the will of the Lord it will win for us a deeper kind of perspective of persons and events that we may go deeper than the eyes we see with our souls time 
is greater than space. We can work slowly and patiently, not obsessed with immediate results. We move with tenacity and clarity of convictions without anxiety, but rather trusting in the Lord who walks with us. We cannot proceed to be a synodal church without conversion. As Peter was instrumental in the conversion of the pagan Cornelius, Cornelius in turn was instrumental in converting Peter's limited cultural and religious mindset into an attitude of universality. We end with the inspired words of Pope Francis to young people. My joyful hope is to see you keep running the race before you. Keep running, attracted by the face of Christ, whom we love so much, whom we adore in the Holy Eucharist, and acknowledge in the flesh of our suffering brothers and sisters. May the Holy Spirit urge you on as you run this race. The Church needs your momentum, your intuitions, your faith. From the Metropolitan Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist, October 17, 2021, Socrates B. Villegas, Archbishop of Lingayen, Dagupan. We all stand. Now together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we await with longing the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters, let us with renewed devotion beseech His mercy that, as He came into the world to bring the good news to the poor and to heal the contrite heart, so in our own time also He may bring salvation to all in me. In every petition, let our answer be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Holy Spirit to guide church leaders as they promote justice and healing for victims and survivors of abuse. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy church, that it may be a light to the nations and the universal sacrament of salvation, walking with all peoples to the kingdom of God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his assistant Bishop, and the holy, faithful people of God, in the Archdiocese of Lingayen Dagupan, that the celebration of this synod may help us to discern God's will and to boldly carry it out, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civil and public authorities, that they may always seek the common good, acting with justice and integrity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, and the oppressed, and the suffering, that they may never be discarded, but rather 
treasured and cared for as the face of Christ in a suffering world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves gathered here, that this synodal process may lead us ever deeper into the communion of the Church, foster our participation in it, and equip us to go out on mission, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in the silence of our hearts, we offer our personal and our particular intentions. O oh God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith, we may truly obtain, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and we joy, we proclaim.
Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis is assistant bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Dominic and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall, shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bago po tayo magtapos ng ating misa, ako po ay magpapasalamat sa ating lector commentator, sa ating acolytes at sa ating Eucharistic ministers at sa inyong lahat po na nakiisa sa misang ito. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ingat po tayo sa ating pag-uwi at nawabaunin niyo po ang pagpapala ng ating Panginoong Diyos sa pamamagitan ng ating mahal na ina, ang Birhen ng Santo Rosario ng Manawa. Muli po, maraming maraming salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. We are the body of Christ and each one of us is a member of it. You who are his people, may the Lord keep you in the unity of, of his love so that the world may come to believe. Amen. We are all called to holiness, you, the religious, the lay faithful, and the entire people of God. Encourage one another to live according to the light of the gospel. Amen. The body of Christ is built up through diverse charisms and ministries. You deacons, priests, bishops, and all ministers of the people of God, may the Lord keep you faithful and joyful in the service of the mission of the church. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Mass is ended. We all go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that, in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles our devotees and pilgrims be blessed and made holy in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen.